does how powerful the Nintendo Switch actually is in comparison to other consoles and other video game platforms really matter? That's the question I'm proposing today and what is a new series that we're calling Prime Debate? And the point of this series is to ask a question and get you guys debating about it down in the comments while I give you some context and possibly my side of the story and the way that I feel. And the reason we're talking about this today is because of a Reddit thread that came up. And I'm just, I'm just going to throw it up here and read off uh, what's going on. A lot of technical jargon and we're going to talk about it after the fact. So here we go. Here is an Excel spreadsheet I made to determine the performance difference per theoretical computation difference between Maxwell Architecture and Polaris Architecture Xbox One versus the Nintendo Switch. Initially, I took frame rates from 26 games comparing the RX 480 and the GTX 970. Using that data, I found a performance difference between the RX 480 and GTX 970. I also took the theoretical compute performance difference between the RX 480 and the GTX 970. Using these values, I created a unit of difference, which gave the relative performance differences per theoretical power difference. Then I used this unit of difference multiplied by the theoretical power difference between the Xbox One and the Nintendo Switch and calculated the performance difference between the two consoles, which ended up being 2.37, meaning that the Xbox One is 2.37 times more powerful than the Nintendo Switch rather than 3.33 times as the theoretical computational power would suggest. To determine whether this me method actually works, I took frame rates of the GTX 950 in the same 26 games and found that the unit of difference between the RX 480 and the GTX 950, then used that and multiplied the theoretical power difference to get a theoretical performance difference. I then compared this to the actual performance difference and obtained a percent error of 1.33%, meaning that this method is pretty reliable. However, after further research, I found that the Xbox One uses a GCN1 Tahiti architecture. So I found benchmarks for the Radeon HD7970. However, due to the age of this card, I was only able to find matching benchmarks between the HD7970 and the GTX 970 in four games. I made sure to obtain all the benchmarks from the same source and made sure all the settings used in benchmarks were the same. Using the benchmarks from the four games, I found that the unit of difference between the HD7970 and the GTX 970 and multiplied that to the theoretical computation difference between the Xbox One and Nintendo Switch and obtained a performance difference of 1.78. Again, I compared this with the GTX 950 and found a percent error of 26.98%. This percent error is very high because I only had the four data points to work with. Too long didn't read. The Xbox One is about 1.8 times more powerful than the Nintendo Switch rather than 3.3 times more powerful as the theoretical computation power would suggest. So, yeah, there's obviously some issues with this comparison and... For those who don't understand the technical jargon, obviously it concludes that the Xbox One's 1.8 times more powerful. Whether or not the Xbox is 3 times more powerful, 2 times, or, or 1.8 times more powerful, the question still remains, does the power of this system really matter? And it's something that constantly comes up because, as we know, there are games coming out for this thing, like Doom. And Doom doesn't even run at, a, at 720p in handheld mode consistently. It has drops down to 540p that have been confirmed, dynamic resolution, everything in general looks a bit blurrier, almost like there's a filter over it. Uh, but the game runs, which is extremely impressive on portable hardware. Now, setting all of that aside, uh, we just have to talk about the power in general. I don't think the power really matters when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, because I don't think anyone's buying the system expecting it to be super, super powerful. Now, in the space of mobile tech, it is actually a pretty powerful chip. Now, it is going to start getting outclassed. There's now, that with the iPhone 8s and the iPhone X coming out, there are CPUs and GPUs out there that are starting to outpace the Tegra X1. The Tegra X2 exists, which obviously outpaces the Tegra X1. Uh, it, it's not exactly the maximum possible power potential for a portable device anymore. When it first came out back in March, this the, the power of this system would be considered uh, close to top of the line, or you know, may, if not top of the line, just like a hair below top of the line in the mobile tech space. But that's not even true anymore. And when you compare it to an Xbox One and PlayStation 4, you're almost not even in the same ballpark. And that isn't to say that the Xbox One, which is the weaker of those two platforms, is significantly more powerful to the point that this thing's embarrassing. But, you know, they have the Xbox One X coming out now that has six teraflops worth of performance. This isn't touching that. Uh, so the question obviously comes back to, does this matter? Does it matter to you? And it's obviously going to be a personal thing. 
I didn't buy the Switch because it was powerful, just like I didn't buy the Wii U because it was powerful, or the 3DS because it was powerful. I mean, you see this this 3DS right here that I'm charging? It. I, I didn't get that thing because it's super powerful. I got it because of the content. Likewise, I got the Switch because of the content and ended up falling in love with the hardware. The hardware being things like detachable Joy-Cons that can become two controllers. The fact that I can play it on you know on the TV at home and on the go rather easily. The fact that games like Breath of the Wild and NBA 2K. I mean, look at this. Look at this right now. I am launching a AAA game, multi-platform this year, NBA 2K18 in portable mode on a Nintendo Switch. So is this thing like the most powerful thing in the world? No, but it's powerful enough for me. But reality is that this system is capable of running AAA games if companies want to do it. It is capable of running anything Nintendo wants to throw at it. And reality is, I bought it because it has the content I want to play. But that's just me. A lot of people out there are still going to debate about the power of it. Obviously, every AAA port that comes to this system is going to be weaker than it is on its contemporaries. But does the Switch really have a contemporary? I mean, you could argue that its closest contemporary is the 3DS at least in terms of gaming-specific platforms. Otherwise, you could argue its other closest contemporaries are mobile phones and tablets. Uh, it's not an Xbox One, it's not a PlayStation 4, and I don't expect it to perform like one, and I don't think most people that buy it expect it either. Now, because it has so many excellent games on it, like NBA 2K18 and Breath of the Wild and such, uh, you're going to see people constantly debating about its capabilities and console level gaming on the go is it really console level gaming if it's not as powerful as the current gen consoles and this is where i just throw the debate back at you how much does power matter to you in your nintendo switch is it even something that we should care about is it something we should even debate about should it even be a conversation should i even report on news when it eventually comes out that the wolfenstein 2 the new colossus runs at sub 720p and 30 fps which we all know it's going to run basically the same as doom does but again is it a conversation that matters based on the viewership numbers it's definitely something people care about here in general on youtube but that might not necessarily be you guys that, that could be a totally different fan base latching onto those videos so you guys let me know in the comments below. Again, this is our first ever Prime debate. I plan to get these out several times a week. Enjoy debating down in the comments, and I can't wait to respond to you at the end of the week. As always, folks, I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content just like this. And if you haven't heard, we're giving away a copy of Super Mario Odyssey. If you go down in the description below, there is a link to Gleam.io, which will allow you to enter. The only requirement is that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, and we hope you're doing that anyways because we have a lot of great content on the way. All right, folks, I'll catch you in the next one.